And that's business back to you, Paul and Pippa. Thanks for that, Nadine. It is 11 and a half minutes past eight this Friday morning. Well, a controversial French game show experiment has found more than 80% of contestants would torture and kill a person if they were given permission by an authority figure. So how far would you go to obey an order? The well, psychologist Dr Mark Wilson joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning, Pippa. It's kind of a disturbing idea, isn't it? But it's not the first time that this sort of thing has been done. No, um, the, the first version of this dates back to the 1960s and I've got a piece of equipment here from Victoria University which was made sometime in the 60s which was intended to do exactly the same sort of thing. But fortunately we have no idea if it was ever used in New Zealand. Oh, that is a little bit disturbing. The idea is that the contestants are told to uh, give electric shocks to another contestant. How severely do they know, that? how severe do they know that mm. those electric shocks would be? Well, certainly in this, in this French reality show, the, they can see the person who's receiving the shocks. It's actually an actor pretending and doing a very good job of it as well. Mm. And um, they go all the way through from just sort of you know, thinking it's mildly ticklish all the way through to apparently losing consciousness and the implication being that they're actually dead. Uh, but there have been lots of variations of this type of experiment which have been done where you can see the participant, you can't see the participant. In some cases where you even have to hold their hand down on the shock plate so they can get the shock. What is the psychology behind it? What do we learn about ourselves from these experiments? Mm. Well, the original experiments were designed to show that the sorts of atrocities that happened in the Second World War in particular weren't due to people just being particularly evil and there was something else going on there. It's an example of a situationist um, explanation. The guy who did the original study, Milgram, would say that it was the power of the situation, merely having someone there telling you to do something and you having the expectation that it's appropriate for you to do it is enough for most of us to actually go ahead and do things to people. Are there examples of this happening? In, I mean, obviously there was back during the World War, mm -hmm. uh, World Wars. Are there any ex examples mm. of this happening nowadays that aren't in the f form of an experiment? Well, um, the, the experiments were originally inspired by people like Adolf Eichmann, the architect of the Final Solution, justifying their behaviour by saying they were just following orders. Mm. And if we look recently at the um, actions of American soldiers in the Abu Ghraib prisoner of war camp um, in the Middle East, um, taking naked uh, prisoners, putting them on dog leads, threatening to electrocute them. And again, when they were, they were taken to court for their behaviour, their justification was that they were just following orders. So that these people uh, in isolation may have been very decent human beings put in certain situations, mm -hmm. they will behave very differently. Uh, it's quite That's interesting right. that these, uh, as you said, the studies have been carried out in various places and the results can be quite different depending mm. on where the study happens. What kind of variation are we seeing? Mm. Well, the, the, some of the highest levels of obedience we find in this type of experiment have been reported in places like Holland, Spain, Italy, Austria, Germany, at around about the same sort of level or higher as we're getting from this reality show in France. The lowest level of obedience I've ever seen was in Australia, um, <laughs> particularly Australian women, and um, I don't know if we should speculate about why Australians well, are su suspicious of authority figures. Oh, no, but that is, I mean, that is interesting. I mean, I guess in a, that's something they should be proud of. Why, do we know mm -hmm. why it would be so much lower in a country like that and we would perhaps assume yeah. New Zealand would be similar? Well I, I, as I say it's never been done in New Zealand so we can self-righteously sit back and say we We think do that. but you are holding equipment <laughs> now that suggests that right. it could have been. Yeah exactly well at least some of us would have and some people are more likely than others to do it so there's, there's the effect of a kind of cultural norm in Australia it's just I suspect more appropriate to question authority whereas in some other places in the world it's not so much the case. Mm. New Zealand being culturally fairly similar to Australia. I suspect that we would be down towards the bottom end, mm. but there would still be some people who would do it. I mean, you talked about, I mean, what does it take to disobey? What sort of person would disobey and say, mm. actually, that's yeah. cruel, I'm not doing it, I'm going to walk away, even though you are telling me to do it? Well, you can look at this two ways. It's a flip side of the coin of who would do it. Um, people who don't experience empathy, who can't understand what it's like to be in the position of the person that they're administering the shock to, power junkies, people who actually enjoy it, people who think that authority should be obeyed and anyone who doesn't listen to them um, deserves to be punished, people with a very traditional uh, worldview, 
authoritarian type of people essentially. So the opposite of that, people who are principled, find it easy to put themselves into the shoes of other people um, and, and who think we should legitimately question authority. Mm. Um, it's a very interesting topic. Dr Mark Wilson, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank and um, do let us know if you ever uncover what the use for that machine was. Um, well, that could if be anyone a, knows, I'd love to hear. It could be a skeleton in the closet of Victoria University. That is uh, Dr Mark Wilson there. I'm just thinking of our current politicians. Which of our politicians do we think would most likely throw the switch versus which ones do we think? For instance, Keith Locke. Keith Locke, I think, would definitely be in the 20% if he, he was would in the other state that authority. would question authority and just wouldn't do it. No. No. I can think of a fair number of people on the other side who would just throw the switch. Ugh, nasty. Um, as you know, um, Ali and myself are considering going to the United States to um, make it big in uh, Hollywood. Yes. And so, obviously,